You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. Happy January, y'all. We hope you're not freezing to death. This week, we're talking about how horse people are surviving the latest polar vortex and how to bring horses back into work after an extended time off. Thanks for tuning in. From Heels Down Mag, a podcast where horse pros chat about what's happening in the horse world over drinks. Welcome, Welcome to Happy, Happy Hour. Hour. I'm Justine Griffin. I'm Jessica Payne. And I'm Ellie Wozniaka. Welcome to episode 120 of Heels Down Happy Hour. Hey, everybody. Hey, guys. Hello, hello. So it's great to hear both of y'all's voices, because the last time I talked to you each individually, you were dying of the plague. That's correct. I yes. had no voice. <laughs> but now now everybody is hanging in there, huh? Like we're doing over, yeah. over on the other side. Well, yes. on the other side, fi- thankfully, after some antibiotics and everything else, I was like on my deathbed for like five days. So it was Ugh. it was really bad. <laughs> so thankfully, I'm much, much better. And now back in the swing of things and back on the new year. There you go. So when, like, did you get sick while you were traveling, Jess? And also Ellie, so, you got sick. I got sick because we decided we should do New Year's Eve in Wellington, where like mm. everybody converges and we should go to bars and like, you know, have some fun, which we didn't even stay out that late. But the rest of my crowd wanted to go home early, and I wanted to stay for an extra drink, and I'm pretty sure that's where I got this plague. And so karma got me, and I got the sickest out of the four of us. But good news was, none of our children got sick, and it was just both the wives, and the boys got it very, very minor, and I I got it by far the worst. So yes, we understand that they're blaming it on me because it was 100% my fault. (laughs) <laughs> oh boy what about you ellie how did you get sick that's a good question because i never leave my house um it was 100 percent not ellie's fault <laughs> <laughs> um so i was like well matt you must have brought something home he's like well i haven't been around anybody who's sick and i'm like well somebody was a little sick but yeah happy to be over that Ugh, no fun well, I do have a fun drink for you guys because I'm uh, currently, while we're taping this podcast, I'm in Wyoming. I'm in Jacksonville. You're in one of my favorite places. It is lovely. We're having a wonderful time and I've done all kinds of fun stuff. And while I was here, I drank this fun cocktail that I thought, you know. Did you go to the cowboy bar in Jackson? We're going tonight, actually. Tonight. <laughs> so fun. So I can't fun. wait. Yeah. Um, so more on that later. But the drink this uh, for this episode is called a Wyoming hot pot. And it's kind of what it sounds like, sort of. Um, it's a whiskey drink. So you're going to need some um, fancy cherries, some sweet vermouth, some sparkling wine or Prosecco, and then your choice of whiskey. Obviously, they recommend a Wyoming whiskey. Because it's um, really good out there. Yep. So you're going to combine all the cherries. What are they called? The Marshishimo. Am I saying this right? Yeah. yeah, Marshishimo cherries. You want to actually, you're not going to use the cherries. You're going to pour out about half of the liquid from the jar of the cherry juice. Okay. Um, And then if you like habaneros, they recommend you remove the seeds from habaneros and then you cut them into two or three pieces. And then you're going to add the pepper pieces into this jar then you're going to fill the top of the cherries with the sweet vermouth and then let it Ooh. sit in the refrigerator for a little while. And then when you're making the cocktail, that was all for the cherries that you're going to put in the cocktail, by the way. So for the cocktail, you're going to fill a glass with some ice. You're going to add about one ounce of Wyoming whiskey um, and about a half ounce of uh, simple syrup. Shake it. Add a squirt of some um, habanero ginger bitters, which sound delicious, by the way. Yeah. And then you're going to divide your whiskey whiskey between a couple of glasses, add the Prosecco to the glass, which is about four ounces, and then drop your habanero cherries that have been marinated in your fridge in the glass and enjoy. That sounds so good. Yeah, I know. I'm excited. It's a, it's a good one. I think you guys will like it. Yeah. I mean, it's a little too vegetable-y and not enough fruity, <laughs> but well, and I, I feel would like definitely it's a lot try of it. Step, it's a lot of <laughs> steps for Ellie. It is. It's kind of like, and you got to pay attention to the directions. Yeah. But it's, no, uh, but I'm all for this. It. I'm going to yeah. try this and I'll, I'll keep you guys posted because this sounds so, so good. 
This is when I will give Matt the instructions to, and I will drink once he has made it. <laughs> right. There you, go. there you go. So this episode is brought to you by Zero Proof Horse Treats. There's no reason to spend dry January alone, and your horse can participate too. Instead of clinking glasses, celebrate your equine companion with Zero Proof Horse Treats, the delicious way to share the spirit of the season minus the spirits. All right, guys, it's time for news, which is brought to you by the Heels Down Spark, the only daily equestrian newsletter. It's free. You could subscribe by going to bit.ly slash spark by HD. All right, Jess, you got some news for us? I do. So it's kind of up in the air, and we've talked about this on the podcast before, about how the LA 2028 Olympics, they're just not sure if equestrian was going to be in it. Well, they have announced that it is definitely going to have equestrian in it, but what's up in the air is if eventing will be in it. So I know a bunch of committees, yeah, a bunch of committees are meeting. They're trying to get it in. They might have to do a little bit of format changes. So basically they're trying to see what they can do to kind of move things around to still allow eventing to be in it. So it's kind of up in the air. It's one of those things that probably is going to get approved, but you never know. They're waiting. But basically, the biggest thing is that they would move cross country to the end of the format. So it would be dressage, then show jumping, then cross country. And then you'd have your team medals then. And then you go back on the fourth day back to jumping, which... I don't know how this kind of makes them happier to move it in there, but whatever works to get eventing in the LA Olympics, I'm good with, but I think we're going to have to wait and see if they can get that approved with this new format and if they can all kind of agree upon, because it would be very, very nice to still see eventing in the Olympics, especially when it's in LA. So is the problem mostly just because of the venue, like just, just, finding the space needed to run the sport? So I think that's part of it. I think there's a lot of different things going on. And so I think they just have to keep working out the details in order to like reassure everybody. So they've had multiple committees about it, but basically they're trying to find a way to make sure it happens and that they can get everybody, but they're not committed yet. I see. Interesting. It would be a very sad thing to finally have the Olympics on home soil and not have a venting run, you know? Yeah. And I mean, we've seen a bunch of uh, different articles coming out and I think no one really knows the right answer because nobody's really, you know, so like you're getting a lot of secondhand stuff. And so I think we just have to kind of wait and see what a lot of different things have been proposed. And so we're just waiting basically to see because they like gotcha. aren't sure between the inspections and everything. It's, it's a lot basically involved. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. see. Fingers crossed, basically. Ellie, what do you have? Oh, man. So I got a good giggle out of my news. We had a really bad cold snap. I mean, Pennsylvania, not nearly as bad as out west. And one lady brought her horses into her house. (laughs) And there are photos of these two horses standing on her hardwood floors. (laughs) Like, just. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) And, I mean, kudos to her. I mean, Matt and I have definitely talked about putting them in the basement where it's concreted, but um, <laughs> definitely not on the hardwood. But that takes some commitment. And she said, like, all well, the horses were, like, nervous at first because I guess they've never been in her house before. Um, but then they just stood there. All I'm just thinking is, like, oh, man, if they took a pee on your hardwood floors, like, dog pee's hard enough. But, um, yeah, kudos to her that she got her horses through it in the way she knew how. Oh my gosh. I have seen those pictures going around. It's pretty funny, but the weather has been nuts. I mean, honestly, I I might do the same. Yeah. And it'd be one of those things where it's like, just do it and ask for forgiveness to the husband, you know, (laughs) right. (laughs) uh, (laughs) What about you, Justine? All right. So I have some more horse girl fashion news. Um, Oh boy. Yeah. So this week, Louis Vuitton had a runway show kind of showcasing their new looks for this next season. Now I'm not a fashion person, so I don't know what that means. I know there's seasonality to it and they, they launch these different collections at very specific times of the year, but the specific show that happened um, 
for, it's for the fall 2024 uh, season uh, that just happened last week, really focused on Western pieces and like Western inspiration. And it was beautiful. Lots of they look voice. like they're going to be hanging out next to you. Right. Like they're in Wyoming. Right. You know? Yes. But it's, yes. Uh, very that feel. Absolutely. Like fun ties and lots of fringe, lots of turquoise. It was actually like pretty cool. Um, Even so some course, trap inspired things. Yeah. Right. And this is for uh, men and women, but I think mostly a men's collection. But I just feel like the horse girl internet exploded when this came out because it was, um, you know, very horsey inspired. So we'll share a link in the show notes so you guys can see it. But I guess this whole horse girl vibe that we've been feeling in sort of more of the mainstream fashion trends lately is um, alive and well going into 2024. And we'll, we'll see what is uh, what is cool, I guess, to wear in public as the year keeps going. That's good for me to know that I could just wear my chinks everywhere and you'll be you good go. to go. <laughs> and you'll be in. You'll be fashionable, yeah. Ellie. <laughs> Big shout out to everyone who has helped contribute to this podcast on Patreon. We appreciate you guys so much. And there is exclusive content for you guys on Patreon. So if you haven't yet, we suggest you go to patreon.com slash heels down. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash heels down. So guys, I wanted to talk to you about a new halter I just bought. And I bet you, you guys have seen these before and you might already use them. But I bought one because I was forced to because Mikey destroyed my last leather halter for him doing something stupid being Mikey right now. And what I've been doing when I've been working with him, especially off property is, and I've done this, I did this with Wyatt last year too, honestly, is I put, I use a rope halter quite a bit for groundwork. And when we go off property and like he's got to stay, stay tied to the trailer, I will still put the rope halter on him, but then put my leather halter over the rope halter uh, for safety when hauling and having to stand tied. But it just looks so clunky and silly that he's wearing two halters, right? So Mikey finally just broke my last leather halter and I was forced to buy him a new one. I've had this horse education halter in my uh, in my cart, like online cart for like probably a year because I love it. The Horse Education Company is a company that makes these halters that combine like the, the lovely look of a leather halter and the safety of a leather halter with the important pieces of a rope halter that are good for training and safety, uh, but also comfort for the horse. So I finally splurged and bought one, and I'm obsessed with it. It looks so nice on Mikey's face, but again, now I don't have to, now I don't have to put two halters on him when I'm working with him on ver- in various ways. But Ellie, do, have you seen these? Have you used them before? Yeah, my mom has one for her uh, Percheron Thoroughbred. Oh, for Sully? Okay. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah I really good. like them. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really beneficial, like you were talking about, with the, the safety aspects, because it is a pain in the butt that you can't do stuff in a rope halter because it's just not safe. <laughs> right, um, it's not going to break, and that, that makes me nervous, you know? Right. It's a beautiful halter. Like it is high quality leather. You can order them with uh, hole punches already in the side piece of uh, for the face. So if you have a nameplate, you can still put a nameplate on it. And the fitting is pretty is pretty easy. Uh, they've got a great guide online to make sure that you know the rope knot pieces are going to fit on your horse's head in the appropriate place because that's really important. And honestly, that's something I see quite a bit when folks start using rope halters is they don't fit them correctly. And then one that can be dangerous when they're too loose, but two, they're not really effective if if the halter doesn't fit your horse in the first place. But anyway, so I, this is a new, a new buy for me and I love it. And I'll share some pictures in the Facebook group so you guys can see it, but it's just a great idea. It's a beautiful halter. Um, They have different colors. I got a, you know, a traditional brown leather halter with a really pretty copper rope, but you can get, mahogany leather with black rope or black leather with a black rope. So uh, there are different ways to customize this. And again, they make their own nameplates too. If you want to add a nameplate to a halter, they're really pretty. And the company who makes this again is the Horse Education Company. And we will link to that in the show notes. All right. So speaking of Mikey, who's breaking all my halters, (laughs) I thought it would be fun to talk to you guys about how you approach fitness for horses I've seen this from a variety of, of topics lately, like or different ways of coming into this with people who um, 
a friend of mine just had a baby. Um, and now they're, now their baby is like four or five months old. So she's getting ready to put her horse back into work. That's been off while she was pregnant. And so she's looking for fitness tips on how to, you know, how to slowly bring your horse back into work after a really long time off. I'm sort of in the same boat with Mikey, right? Like we've just been doing rehab work, but are finally starting to add real fitness um, to, to kind of build his fitness so we can do more work. So Jess, I thought we'd start with you. Like, we yeah. always give, you know, the five-star horses or the show jumpers like a season off, like when the season's over and they get to just go be turned out. So how do you start bringing them back? Even, it depends on how much time they get, obviously. But mm-hmm. let's say they get a good period of time off or like what you're talking about with your friend, which made a great decision. Like, let the horse have time off when she's pregnant because I try to preach that as much as possible because then when you're out of shape and you don't feel great after a baby, your horse doesn't feel great either. So you can kind of get back into shape slowly together because That's slowly is the biggest thing. And so if they've only had a month or so off, we'll still walk them for a couple weeks. Like we start very slow. If they've mm-hmm. had an extended time off, walk them even a little longer and start slow. And honestly, it's probably great for your friend, right? Trot a little bit till you feel tired. Then your horse is probably tired. Then go for a walk together, you know? And so it's nice when the human and horse are a little out of shape. So you know, like as soon as you're feeling tired, don't push it don't go too much. And so just do little bits at a time. And if you're coming back from like a rehab, talk to your vet, make a realistic goal of like, do I just do a couple minutes every day of trot work? And then I go for a long walk if they're able to walk. And so, or we'll walk around the ring basically. So if you can go for like a long walk up and down field, the hills and everything else, great. Some of them can't handle that and they go wild, stay in the ring, stay in a controlled place and just keep walking them. And so we do very, very small increments at a time. So like if they've been on an injury or like, you know, when I had time off and mine sat, then we went back slow. We took walks, we, you know, just hang out, do a couple of minutes of trotting for a couple of weeks and then get back to cantering in like a couple minutes. And like, so if we're rehabbing, we have our vets and like we work very closely with them and that we do small increments at a time and then they Mm -hmm. get scanned to make sure they look okay or whatever's happening so that we like very, very slowly so that we don't tend them to like cause to like tie up or re-injure themselves or do all of the above. So our biggest is we walk a whole lot. So question about that walk, because I think that's great. What is it? Is it just like a free walk, kind of free ambling, or are you like putting them together? Are you asking them to step under? Like how much work in the walk is it? So it depends on the horse. Some of them I'm having to like keep them together so we don't explode, right? So then I'm like really (laughs) keeping them together and like they're on the muscle and you're just trying to keep them walking without jigging or any of the above or even worse, right? Mm -hmm. The other ones, like if they're quiet, like just go let them walk, especially for the first couple of weeks. Like let them have their nose, like let them be, you know, just kind of dazing. Okay. Don't, in our opinion, we want them to walk and work. So don't let them like mosey slower than what you would walk on yourself. So we make them walk like they've got a purpose, but not truly having to step under. They don't have to work because at the same time, you don't want to put them together and working the top line. That's going to create tension and they're going to become sore from that. You want it to just be like going on a walk like you would. Like, let's say you've been sitting still for forever. You go, you don't just like march walking. You just kind of not, you know, dilly dally. You just kind of have a good walk. Think of it like yourself, like how you would present it to walking. You're not going to go on a mission power walking, but you're not going to be like, you know, one inch in front of the, you know, you're not taking inch steps. You're just having a good walk. Right. Okay. That makes sense. What about you, Ellie? I mean, obviously you've re you're rehabbing horses too, but I'm sure you've had to bring horses back into work with some training clients. Like how do you approach that? Yeah. I mean, I think everything Jess said is spot on, especially with the walking and like, I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing to do, you know, a short, like do a long side, walk the short sides. You know, that's what I had to do. Like when I was rehabbing myself too, you know, just to get my balance back 
that's a good thing to do for him too. I think the biggest thing is just, you know, being cautious. I think it's easy when you're not rehabbing a horse, right? I mean, cause I give my horses the winter off every year, right? Cause I'm not going out there when it's cold. I'm like, have fun, be a horse. Um, All right. <laughs> but so every spring, right. I kind of have to bring them back. And if they're, if they're not in rehab, right. I'm, it's really easy, especially when I get on Berkeley and stuff to just like, you know, I'm like, Oh man, like he feels so good. I want to jump just cause he's, he's so broke, <laughs> you know? So I think it's easy to get stuck in that trap. So I think being conscious about that and like, I set timers for myself. I have to change the timer ringtone though, because my horses have now caught on to the timer ringtone. So they will break. Oh, now that's a, funny. They will that's break hilarious. to a walk when they hear the timer. That is hysterical. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, I got to change this ringtone. <laughs> um, but like do, keeping that in mind, I think is, is big too, especially when, you know, we're all really excited to get back into riding season. Yeah, no, that's a great, those are really great points and all things that I like are very top of mind for me. You know, like I, with Mikey, when we were approved to start trotting by the vet, we were still doing a ton of hand walking and a ton of, of under tap walking just cause I was trying to keep him a little bit fit, you know, try to keep some, some work in, in, and it just helped him. I think at the time to get him out of the stall, cause he was still on stall rest that he was, we were okay to walk for like an hour at a time just to keep it going. But, um, I mean, now that you like, we're actually sound enough to do real work. I, I mean, I think it's going to be like six months before he's like, quote unquote fit for like a real job again. I don't know if yeah. that sounds like a long timeline or what, but I just, I think it's just going to take that long in, in small steps, you know? Yeah, no, I think that's a realistic timeline because yeah, it does it always take a long time. seems so long and you're like, it, it it always takes a while, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, it is what it is, you know? It is. Live Eck is an app free for equestrians and is breaking down the barriers and making the sport more accessible to everyone, which is great for people like me who live in the middle of nowhere and it's helping connect Riders with local job opportunities or riding lessons, horse leasing, and other equestrian needs. You should check it out at www.liveek.com. All right, Ellie. So I have lots of questions about how cold it is <laughs> for you. <laughs> because, because not everybody gets to live in Florida. Exactly. Right. And I'm not going to lie. It's been cold in Florida, but like I it has been it's cold relative. in Florida, actually. <laughs> So like, we're all dying in Florida too, but, um, we will survive and you uh, people like Ellie will laugh at us. Um, but... and I was going to say, wait, I, I've not been in Florida, but I've seen the temperatures. And when she means like they're dying, aren't you saying like, it's in like the fifties and sixties, the high this week, Tuesday, the high was 35. That is pretty dark. <gasps> oh, okay. Cold. That's wow. legit cold. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's like, what I wanted to like, I was like, are we talking fifties and sixties or okay. That's no. legit cold. Okay. And people here are like losing their minds on like how much salt can I give my horse because I'm afraid they're not gonna drink. And I'm like, guys, <laughs> nobody's like has frozen water buckets. We're gonna be okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we've had really good discussions in our Facebook group. It is really freaking cold in other places. And I feel like owning horses, especially folks who have their own farms, like that's a lot of work. Um yeah. a lot of prep yeah. when it's that cold. So one. How are you doing, Ellie? Are you and the horses okay? And do you have any like tips and tricks or barn hacks that like you live by this time of year just to kind of make the experience a little bit easier for you? Oh boy. Yeah. So I'm so tired. <laughs> um, <laughs> I bet. It, it hadn't been bad until like a couple weeks ago. You know, it was freezing and unfreezing, but not nothing, nothing horrible, nothing freezing my inside water buckets. That's where I start to get cranky. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's tough for me because winter is usually my favorite time to own a horse because I let them live outside 24 seven in the winter because I can just bundle them up. They have shelter, they have heated water outside. There's no bugs. Yippee-ki-yay. I don't clip them. You know, they're all woolly mammoths. 
so, but it sucked because the last two winters, I have not been able to do that because the ground has been like muddy and just disgusting. But so, I mean, for this specific cold snap, it's been like the first time I've blanketed all year. We haven't really had any like snow or anything, which is unfortunate uh, for me <laughs> because I can't put them out all the time uh, with the mud. But that has actually become the problem uh, mm. is like the ground. So my horses were like, you know, middle of their cannon bone deep in mud before, which I'm like, whatever. I don't care. You lose a shoe, you lose a shoe, you know, go have fun in the mud. Uh, I have my horse vacuum. I'll be OK. <laughs> but unfortunately, when it froze, it, it's dangerously uneven. Right. Because it's, you know, that's what, like six, eight inches difference between the high points and the low points in that frozen ground. And usually if we get that muddy season, we'll get some snow and that'll pack in and the ground will be, you know, still it'll fill in the holes. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened this year since we haven't had enough snow um, or it hasn't stayed long enough to actually compact into those holes. So with this extra cold snap this past week and just this year in general with how unsafe the ground is. My horses have been inside more than ever. Um, and I've been using my indoor arena for turnout, um, which I hate oh, to do. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I hate to do that partially because I have my dust free footing first footing, which because it's mixed with wax, it sticks to them a lot. <laughs> um, and it's just not fun to brush out because um, it's made for riding, not for yeah. rolling in. But that's what I've been having to do because the ground is just so uneven. And I have the horses out in their summer pastures. Like literally they were eating grass in December because it's just been such a such a weird year. But I guess my go to tricks for just like crazy winter weather is just like for me, like frequency of going out, which I know isn't possible for people that don't work from home. But I try to go out like every like I refuse to do heated water buckets in my barn. I just have like I've heard horror stories of them starting fires and I just I don't I refuse to do it. So I have like the the insulated ones that you screw into the wall. Do you know which ones I'm talking about where the bucket goes in? Uh, yeah. They don't use this they don't use the same five gallon buckets. They use like the paint, like, you know, round buckets and they have little tops that they have to push down to drink. Oh yeah. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. So I use those inside, um, except for, for Q because he doesn't get to have the thing on top because he tries to play with them and he's broken quite a few. Um, cause they can just take it out with their mouth if yeah. they really wanted to. And Q gets bored in his stall, but those help a lot. And then in terms of, you know, just going out frequently to keep hay going all the time, like I'd like try to go outside every two and a half, three hours and feed them more hay just because that's the biggest way they're going to keep warm. Right. So, yeah, that would be my my tips and trick is like if you if you have somebody who, you know, is working for you or if you're at a boarding facility I think that kind of thing, requesting that kind of thing in crazy cold weather, it sucks for those that are out there in the crazy cold weather, but it makes it easier um, for the horses. And I also, I pick stalls every two and a half hours too when they're stuck inside because it makes my job easier to just pick up a few poops as opposed to like all day. <laughs> Good tips though. Like I just, like, I don't know how you deal with frozen water pipes and anything like that. That sounds terrible. Yeah, I mean, I'm lucky because I have frost proof hydrants. Um, and yeah. then to be honest, I, I don't know. Matt does this has this like wire thing that you plug in that you wrap around that's that heats the actual pipe. Um, and then oh, there's nice. insulation around that. There's an actual name for it, but um, that is Matt's department. That's what you call it. <laughs> that's amazing. That is a Matt department thing. Um yeah, I mean, outside we just use the heated trough, you know, mm -hmm. um, cage heaters, which is why I love having them outside. But I think the hardest part, like with this, is because it has been so warm for so long, like dealing with the frozen mud 
that's is that, worse. That's the worst part is like, I, I can't put the horses out in their normal winter pastures because they will like break their legs. Like they can't, yeah. there's no ground unless they're way far in the back where they can even put one foot and it have it all be on a level surface. And that's just not, it's not fair to them. That's not possible. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't want to deal with, I'm not rehabbing another horse. Got no, <laughs> I'm not doing it. No, you're doing the smart decision. <laughs> it just is not fun. Yeah. What about so, you, Jess? I know like you're not nearly as cold as Ellie, but you guys get some cold weather in North Carolina. We get cold. And so we do a mash. Like when the temperature changes a bunch, we actually use the Purina Replenum mash that we've talked about on here. Yeah. We make a big, big mash of it and basically feed it through the whole barn. And so we do that um, if the temperature is going to change a lot or if it's going to get really cold. So we make sure they're getting water and everything else in it because it's basically a soupy mess. And then we're fortunate that we don't really get, okay, we've had like a couple where it's 35 as a high or 38 as a high and it gets pretty cold. And so, yeah, those days, you know, we've had two of them when we've been here so that we literally just don't ride or they go for walks like we've talked about. And then um, other days, like if the arena gets frozen, we talked about in the past, we use the tarp. We haven't had that many days where we've had to pull the tarp out that we actually ride in the field because once the ground, you know, if it's above freezing, the ground, you know, actually thawed out where sometimes it takes the arena a little bit longer. So we use the hill, we use the top of the field, we use different parts of our field to ride in the field and kind of learn to cross train them that way. And that's been super helpful for the horse's fitness as well, is they have to, you know, go up the hill trotting and up the hill cantering and down the hill trotting. And so we've done a lot more cross training this year using the field and not just saying, okay, let's wait for the ground or the arena to thaw out. We're like, nope, we're just going to go outside. And the fields have been quite nice, to be honest. So uh, we've just kind of thought outside the box and said, what can we do a little bit differently that we can ride and get them out of their stalls? Because yeah, sometimes we've not been able to turn out uh, because the ground has been frozen and gross. But now weather's looking back okay. And they've been able to go out and we're going to see 70 this week. So I, uh, this weather is just craziness. It yeah. is nuts. It's so weird winter. Yeah. And I think the mash comment is a really important it's one. Huge. It's um, great. Yeah. I mean, I use just hay extender that I wet a lot. Yeah. Um, but I think Anything that's so as important. long as they're wet and they're getting that water Absolutely. that, you know, mm-hmm. then they can have. And we check, you know, obviously like they're, buckets and everything else. And we do late check and it works, but yeah, we've been, we have been very lucky fingers crossed and knock on wood and all the above. We have not had snow yet. So we've had some low temperatures, but like Nashville got seven inches of snow and school was closed for a whole week where my family is. And so thankfully we've not dealt with that dramatic. We've just had a couple, two days that were kind of chilly. Yeah, it's, no, that's nuts. I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to know. No. It just sounds like a lot of work. I saw in the news that we're in a drought of like having no snow and Doug and I are like, yes, like, thank God. Like, it's so <laughs> nice because we can get snow. We just haven't gotten it. So we're thankful this year. See, I don't mind it at all. Like I. Well, you want to have snow early so you can keep the snow where exactly. it's been such a crazy one. Yeah. Well, we get snow for like two days and then it's gone and it's that yucky mess you're talking about. Yeah. Well, if you guys have good winterizing tips for the barn or things you like to do with the horses, like good routines through the winter, please share them with us in the uh, Facebook group. I think it's great to share these tips and tricks because a lot of us are uh, experimenting this time of year, like just trying to get by. Make this January extra special for your equine soulmate with Zero Proof Horse Treats. For a limited time, Heels Down Happy Hour listeners are getting free shipping plus a free gift when you order online at zeroproofhorsetreats.com when using the promo code Heels Down. And that's all one word. And that's right, just Heels Down. And you get an extra gift plus free shipping. So don't delay. 
order zero proof for your horse today. All right, guys, it's time for Rose and Thorn. Who wants to go first? Oh, I can, I can go. Oh, no, okay, you go. go. Ellie, go. you can go. You're all good. <laughs> it's Ellie's turn. Oh, man. Well, my thorn's easy because I was laid off from my uh, oh, non-horse no. job. Yeah, I mean, I understand it from a corporate perspective. They're just moving my job basically to another country. But it sucks from a, like, having to pay my bills perspective and also a health insurance perspective. Um, oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm really worried about that. Because the infusions that I have to get every month are twenty grand a pop, and I obviously can't afford that. Um, no. <laughs> I don't think anyone in their right mind can afford that. And like, if I did like Cobra, it's like nine hundred dollars a month. So it's just definitely not an expense I was looking to have to deal with. So that's not fun. And having to like look for a job again is just kind of yucky. So yeah, so that's not fun. Um, but my Rose is that I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that the ground will turn back to mud and I can turn my horses out. Um, but no, I, I, I'm my rose is that everyone is doing well with how horrible the weather has been. They're definitely cranky that they've been stuck inside, but I've been trying to do enrichment with them and stuff. And I'm just like, I'm proud of them for keeping their stuff together. And like, especially when I can turn them out, I do. And they don't completely lose their minds. So I'm, I'm happy that they are keeping it together for the, for the winter. Uh, well, hang in there, Ellie. I'm sure you'll find something soon. Yes. Yes. I've got a few interviews, so I'm hoping that those go well. Good. Good. Yeah. Fingers, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. What about How you, about Jess? you? So, my thorn we already kind of talked about is I don't think I made the extent of how bad the plague was. I mean, I told you how sick it was. <laughs> I was sick for 12 days. Ugh. So that was basically my whole season. Like, I mean, it was all of January, basically, I was sick. So that's all of what I've kind of experienced in January. So, like, you know, poor Doug, poor everybody. Rebecca and I were so sick. That like the first week of Wellington, we took the kids, they were down there and we, I spent basically the whole time on the couch, like just deadly sick. It was awful. And so nice. my rose was that like, we were able to be down there and we were with friends and that we were able to like, kind of get through this. And the kids had a ball, like they went to the safari and everything else. So that's like the light at the end of the tunnel of I wouldn't say that's my rose. That's like the light of the end of the tunnel of my thorn type thing. And so it was definitely like not how I expected January to go. I did not think I was going to be spending January on the couch. So that was not fun. But my real rose is that we're making a schedule so that I can get back competing little icon. So I'm excited uh, of looking forward to this season. I'm hoping to take them. Um, down to Ocala and then if I can figure out the kid's school and getting down there he'll go there and then if not uh definitely getting out at try on so I'm just excited for this season to get on and compete my little horse that's exciting I know. so what are you what are you gonna show him in what do you want to do this year I'm excited so so he'll be a he's a jumper so it'll be good like so I'll probably start at like I don't know the 90s 80s something like that and like work up hopefully by like the end of the year at the one tens and but mainly i'd like to be consistent in the meters through the summer and stuff he's already competed through the meters so getting back there and kind of getting him there and consistent with me is basically the goal and then hopefully moving him up sounds awesome yeah. so we're gonna we're gonna start depending on how much i can really prepare like if i get down to ocala and i'm there for a period of time you know, maybe you do a little bit more and then if not, not giving myself the grace to just kind of start small and not be a big deal about it. There you go. All but right, just well, be back in the show ring. That's my big goal. I know. That's awesome. It's exciting. I'm excited yeah. to see you guys go. Yeah. Cause I mean, I've had the other ones and stuff like that, but this one, you know, I started and he's been fun. So getting him, I think he's, he's my type of horse. So I'm, I'm excited to kind of see where he can go and take us. Awesome. 
What's yours? Oh, boy. And I feel like my thorn should be that I didn't get the plague. <laughs> right. But, um, that should be your rose. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. That's my rose. <laughs> that's not your uh, thorn. Yeah. That is your rose that you were not deathly sick like Ellie and I. Yeah. Somehow I was spared, huh? Um, but no, my rose. So while we've been out in Wyoming, it's kind of a quick trip, but my husband had some work here which brought us to Casper, Wyoming, which is a place I never thought I would ever visit in my lifetime <laughs> and, uh, for a few days. And while he was working, I drove out to one of the Native American reservations and got to spend some time with this very cool family who runs a sanctuary for wild horses. Um, so It looks is, uh, so fun. It was so cool. It was beautiful. So this family has about half of their 1,400-acre farm set aside for um, American Mustangs that are rounded up by the BLM, and they tend to be a little bit older, like 15 years and plus. So they're kind of a, not the most attractive horses that get adopted out. Uh, so they adopt them and let them live the, re the remainder of their years wild and free on these 700 acres. And um, I spent a day out there with them and we drove out into the fields and got to help feed them. You know, they drop hay for them in the winter and it was just so cool. And it, you know, there are wild horses actually out on that range on that reservation too. And it was just fun to learn more about the history behind American wild horses. It was really cool. I'm sure I'll find a place to write about it at some point in time. Cause I just had a really wonderful time. And it was like one of those, like, you know, ultimate horse girl things to do, like something I'll remember forever. And it was just a really fun day. So that is my rose. My thorn. Oh, goodness. Um, my thorn is probably the vet bill that I will get up here at the end of the month for my vet. Oh, uh, no. But you guys are going to laugh. Wait till, you, wait till you hear it. So uh, Mikey has been, knock on wood, really, really darn sound. And we're moving along. And I am um, fairly convinced he's going to return to a life of a normal working horse here shortly. And then about a week ago before the trip, like his leg was coming up hot and puffy. And I was just like losing it. Like it's over. He re-injured it. We're going to ultrasound this thing. And it's going to be like there's another hole in it. I was just like every... I was convinced that I broke him, you know, I was just totally convinced. And, but it was always borderline, you know, like he hadn't taken an unsound step, but where's this heat coming from? Uh, you know, I, and I was so afraid to keep pushing him if something was wrong. So finally it was like, I just have to call, I have to pay the vet. And so I talked to the vet over the phone and I love, I love my vet dearly. I've known him, gosh, most of my life. Like he treated my horses when I was in middle school, you know, and he's been in our community for a really long time. And he's just a, a beloved, wonderful person and just a really compassionate vet. And I'm pretty sure I am his biggest pain in the ass client. Cause I just, I, every time <laughs> I call amazing. him, I cry, I cry always. I always oh, you cry. cry. Oh no. Yes. <laughs> and so every time I call, I think he, it just, I feel him like bracing for it now, you know? <laughs> and so he, but he's so kind to me. Like he really, he really doesn't need to be, but he is, he's so kind. And he's like, all right, I want to come out but I have a feeling it's, it's probably fine. Everything's fine. So of course we get there. And, um, also Mikey, like I've told you guys, Mikey is wild right now. So he was like, well, before we ultrasound, let's just jog him. And we could not jog him. <laughs> there was no like keeping all four feet on the ground at any point, oh, no. he was, like flying in the air. And he's like, okay, we're going to sedate him and I'll just ultrasound. And, um, and yeah, he's totally fine. The leg is healed. We palpated it. Um, we had, we ended up flexing him and like jogging a little bit. He's totally sound. And the, the vet's just like, you know, it's great that you're aware of changes, you know, so you'll, you'll spot something quickly, but like, it's time to be brave and you just got to push him. Then don't, don't look for, don't look for things that are going to make you paranoid. Like you've done all the work, the time, oh, the time has passed. It's time to go. So it's my, um, it's my like uh, mental health vet bill <laughs> is what yeah. that's going to be. You know? That's okay. You know what? That's a good <laughs> mental health vet bill because it wasn't a real like a worst real case vet bill. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Still going to sting when it, when that several hundred dollar vet bill arrives. But yeah. You know. oh, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? It could have been way worse. So you'll take that vet bill all day long. I promise. I will. I will. I've, I've, I've breathed easy since he came. Yeah. So it's good. It's all good. All right, guys, we have a great mailbag from Allie who posted this in her, in our Facebook group. And she shared a fun video of her riding her horse and jumping him around. 
But she has this horse and she's starting to jump. And she wanted to know, how do you go about finding what is the best quote unquote job for your horse? Allie is new to riding English and new to jumping and she wants to try all of it, but she doesn't really know where to start. So, um, I don't know whoever wants to start. Like, how do you decide when you're looking at a horse? Like what is the right ring to start them in? Well, for me, I don't think it's necessarily one thing. Like we kind of take them and then see what they like. Like, are they really game and they want to jump a couple like small logs and they want to do more of like the hunter derbies because they look more like a hunter or just what did they enjoy? Like, do they like doing dressage? Do they like being in a frame and really like wanting to trot and be pretty? Do they, are they game to jump? Are they game to jump more? What looks like show jumping or whatever. And we just kind of play with them and, if you kind of just take it slow and let them kind of talk like to you, basically they'll explain to you what they like because a lot of them will be like, absolutely not. I don't want to go in the grass. Like I don't like the unsure footing. I want to stay in the ring. I want to be more. Some of them are game and they're like, I want to go, you know? And so I think that if you just kind of allow them to do a little bit of everything, they kind of show you if you're willing to listen. Yeah, that's a great point. What about you, Ellie? How do you decide? Yeah, I think that's a really good way. And I think they do, they show you in different ways, right? Like yeah. one time I, like when I first got Batman, I was like, oh, I'm just going to jump him like for fun and we'll see how this goes. Obviously that was before like rehab and everything. And like, he he did it for me, but he was so anxious afterwards. He, he was like, mm, I prefer not to. And I'm like, that's totally fine. You know? So I think like, like Jess said, you just have to be open to them telling you also that they don't like it, right? Yeah. You know, some horses don't like to jump at all, uh, like Batman. And some horses, like, will do it, but not well, like Q. Um, and, like, he, he probably would do it again. He doesn't really care. Um, but it's not, like, something it's like not the really easiest thing enjoys. For right. And it's not something he really, like, takes joy in. Like when he's chasing a cow and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to stay on because you're running really fast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but so I think, yeah, I think, think it's it's important to try it all. And I think it's a good idea to get a trainer um, from each, you know, if you're trying to go different disciplines or if you're trying to go, um, you know, different aspects of English, get lesson around, lesson with different people, clinic with different people. So that way you can see what your horse likes and what you like. Yeah, great points. And also, Ali, uh, the only thing I would add to what Jess and Ellie have already said is try it all. Like, because it sounds like this is new for you, too. Like, yeah. Go do a, go do a little hunter division and go do an equitation division and then go play around in the jumpers the next see day. See what you like. Yeah, I think there's you will learn and your horse will learn something from everything. And if you're doing it safe with a trainer or. Uh, you know, at lower levels, as you're figuring it out, I, I really don't see what the, you know, there's no real risk in it. And, and you'll learn quite a bit. You'll, I think you'll know eventually then like what you're best suited for both of you, you and your horse. So try it all, give it a, give it a try. And I think that it's just fun too, to do new things with your horses too. But if you have a question and you'd like for us to answer it on the show, you can always send us an email at hello at heelsdownmedia.com. Or you can join our Facebook group, which is the Heels Down Happy Hour Podcast Lounge. And if you want to hear more from us, you can subscribe to the Heels Down Spark. You can do that by going to bit.ly slash spark by HD. We want to say thank you to our partners this week, Zero Proof Horse Treats and Liveek. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>